Hello and welcome to the third Food Advisor migration demo, where we walk through a basic application and cover some of the most important things that you will encounter when migrating your application. In today's video, we're going to talk about migrating custom controllers. If you haven't seen the previous two videos, I'm going to put a playlist here to check out some of the other resources that we have done to help you on your migration journey. Let's first start by taking a look at our project that we set up in the previous two videos. And here we're going to go into source under API restaurants, clicking controllers. We'll see that we're currently using our V4 style controller that is created using the factory function. Because after you run code mods, it will go ahead and create these generic controllers for you. So all of your previous custom code is going to live in this V3 folder. So let's go into API, restaurants, click controllers, and here's our controller where we could see the custom code. Now, before diving into the migration part and updating these two controllers, let's go ahead and take a look at the documentation. After we ran code mods in the previous video, we're technically now working in a Strapi V4 project. So there's two places in the documentation you could go for help. In our V4 documentation, you can start start by looking at the code migration guide where you'll be able to see all the different options that you have available. If you wanted to learn more about how to update configuration, dependencies or routes, controls and services, you could click one of those options. Majority of this has been done for us via code mods. So the only parts are left are the ones that we have to migrate ourselves because we have custom code. An example we're going to take a look at is our controller. So in this example, it talks talks about the V3 through V4 differences when creating a controller. And it also shows you an example of what it looks like currently in our current code. Without customization, code mods would create the generic controllers that use our factory functions to generate them. But if we want to customize it, it will show us an example of what that would look like. In this example, we could see that we pass a function in which we overwrite the controller that we want to customize. In this example, they're using find. So at this point, your best friend is the V4 documentation. So going back to our project, taking a look in our code example, this is what our V3 controller looks like. So it's our job to modify this for V4. And this is what we're going to do next. Let's start by adding some data into our restaurant content type. We're going to start our application by running yarn develop. Let's log in. And just so we could visually see our data, go into your content manager, into restaurants, and let's create a new entry. I'm gonna add this image. Let's add a name, some description, somewhere in Mexico, some website.com. And we're just gonna add some of this basic data, 555-5555. So when we make a call to the API, we could make sure that it works. And opening hours, let's do Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Why not? And save and publish. So we added data to our basic restaurant. Let's go ahead and make sure that we could see it. Inside roles, go into public. Let's click on restaurants, find and find one. Click save. And if we go to this endpoint, we should be able to see our restaurants. So let's go ahead and give it a try. So making a get request inside Insomnia to our API endpoint, when we click send, we are getting our data that we just added. Fantastic. So let's go to the next step and customize our controller. Inside our code editor, under source, API, restaurants, controllers, restaurants, I'm currently in this restaurant controller that was generated via factory function that has our initial functionality. But we wanna go ahead and extend it to add our custom functionality that we want. I also have the V3 controller for reference because you're going to go line by line and make sure that we translate it into our V4 controller. But to get us started, let's go ahead to our documentation and copy this original example and go through the code. Make sure you add a comma. 
and perfect. After we paste the code, what we're doing is we're overriding that original find controller. We're adding a locale in our query. Next, we are extending the original controller by using super.find, to which we pass our context to get back our data. And we're adding additional data to the metadata by calling the current date and adding it to our meta. So when we run our previous query, we should see an additional field in our meta called date with today's date. So let's see if that works. But first, make sure that your server is running. So let's double check. Okay, it's running for any reason. Whenever you work in your code, sometimes your server will stop running. You could just restart it by running yarn develop. So let's go back to Insomnia and test our query. When I click send and we take a look, we now see that extra object that we added. So now what we're going to do, we're going to delete the example code. We know that we are overriding our previous controller and we're going to go ahead and write our own custom logic. So let's look at our previous query. So we no longer have this restaurant that search method. And so this whole section is irrelevant. The reason why, because now we'll be able to query what we need by passing search filters, for instance, where a name equals whatever query we provided. So we could actually not include this in our new controller, but we still want to make sure that we get all the restaurants. So we're going to extend the find method to get our data. We could do this in our code by typing const restaurants equals await dot super dot find and we're going to pass the context. Little typo here, there is no period after await. And we're just gonna return restaurants. So let's take a look and see if this works. If you like, you could also console log the restaurants to see what you get. Again, make sure you restart your server. Back in Insomnia, let's run our query. Notice that it still works. We're able to return our restaurant's data, which is a great start. Looking at our v3 controller, we look that here we call a service that returns an average for each restaurant. We currently do not have the service available for us and we're going to implement it in the next video. But for now, at least let's pretend like we do and add dummy data because that's gonna be asynchronous. We're going to wrap our map function inside await promise.all. So let's go ahead and do restaurant.data equals await promise all. And within this promise, we're going to iterate through our restaurant data and we're going to add a new attribute, which is going to be our average. For now, we're going to hard code it to simulate that we are able to get the data. So let's type restaurant.attributes.note. That's the field that we want to add. And for our average right now, we're going to do 747. Why not? And what we want to do is make sure that we return a restaurant. Let's test this out and see. But before we do, let's add a new note here, which is going to be to do create get average note service. Perfect. But for now, let's go ahead and check it out and see if this works. Again, we start your server. Perfect. Let's test our query, click send. And notice what we're doing. We are appending that average score to our response. So we have customized majority functionality. The only thing that we're missing is our custom service that we're going to do in the next video. So to clean this up, I'm going to delete the console log, delete unnecessary comments. And this is going to be our ending point so far. The main takeaway here is that we are now working in a strappy v4 application and for any customizations or questions that you have reference the v4 documentation you could do it both from the migration guide or simply just search backend customization and look for what you're working on in our case controllers and then you could look through the examples provided here to show you how to customize extend or create a custom controller in our case we were extending the controller and we literally used this example to help us start it.
it. So in the next video, we're going to take a look how to create a custom service that's going to get the average that we want to return in our restaurants. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video. By the way, if you're not on Discord yet, go ahead and join. Not only do we do a monthly Strapi development best practices where we dive deep into the Strapi code and you have opportunity to ask questions, but we also have many great channels where you could go for help, including a channel specific to V3 and V4 migration. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video. And remember, if you have any questions, I'll see you on Discord.